So, ancient Europe. The genesis of the elven fairy. Um, okay. The, the race of elven fairy is perhaps the oldest bloodline still in existence today. Um, many viewers are obviously going to be shocked or alarmed or not necessarily in under in a place of understanding when we talk about an elven fairy bloodline. Um, the details do, however, not only complement what is believed of archaeological past concerning human development, um, but also to satisfy unanswered questions about the universe and that same development that has remained unresolved. Um, it's as if perhaps the human culture has, has lost something. Um, it's perhaps that they've lost a feeling or a memory that was at one time second nature or innate, linking their blood to the earthways, an innate knowledge that all is one, all is connected. Um, perhaps humans have not forgotten, perhaps instead they have chosen, albeit subconsciously conditioned to choose by society, to ignore this inner calling. Regardless, for those that gather now to answer this call, we will explore the uh, forgotten history of men and elves. Um, to begin, the elves do not necessarily record history in the same respect that we might think of in this reality. Um, much like the beliefs of the uh, what we believe of the druids um, to follow the elven tradition, um, there is this innate or cultural taboo to put down into writing that was which most sacred. Um, the belief followed that if one was no longer responsible to commit things to memory, then the genetic memory that was held so important to this people of an oral tradition, um, it might become tainted or it might become recessive. Um, we can see even today that the emphasis on memorization has given away to this ideal that resources will always be available to us, you know, at the click of a button. Um, so, in, in studying the elven fairy or the elven fairy tradition, or if you feel that you yourself actually um, apply to this on a personal basis, um, studying the bright things, as it is called in the elven tradition, is one one possible avenue to illuminating this this lingering ignorance that seems to plague plague our world. Um, the elven fairy um, that exists as part of the great Western magical tradition are typically either of the she, the, the she high elves, or the sylvan wood elves uh, variety. These beings acknowledge that they are the firstborn of Europe in the elven tradition, um, mainly descending from the Garden of Eden in Mesopotamia. And this is somewhat of a misleading statement because in all of their antiquity they're, they're really not the first generation, although they were indeed a part of the, the true and original genetic experiment in the Eden. Um, according to um, the research that was going into um, this curriculum back in um, after the turn of the millennium, um, it seemed that they were actually the ninth race to be born on the planet um, as far as those which exist today, or the ninth generation, rather. Um, and this planet, the Earth planet Gaia, whatnot, it's, it's got many names and an unfathomably old history, um, one of which actually is Middle Earth, and thanks to the research and borrowing of J.R.R. Tolkien, Middle Earth has become practically a, a household name. Um, in Tolkien's version, even the elves are the firstborn of Middle Earth, and he translates their name uh, as a link to their genetic ancestry to mean the children of Eru, um, whom the Celts uh, called the children of Danu. And the name Eru, as an elvish word, correlates with Anu in the English tongue, 
or at, at least the uh, the Mesopotamian root of it. And it's um, what he ended up concocting, which is kind of like a almost pre-cuneiform Indo-European root, was the Quenya language. And in that, Iru, Anu, these would relate to this like source of all being and creation on a an original and more appropriate title for, um, I guess, God, so to speak. Um, and it's interesting because, like, Jewish mystics of the Kabbalah even today believe that it's unlucky, or more correctly, even blasphemous, to um, say or even write the name God, G-O-D. They often spell it with G-D in their modern printed works. Um, the... the uh, the elves have a history that's older than any human recordings, and yet we still must accept that they are of the ninth generation. Their personal history and genetic memory, although vast, does not present some obscure vision, story of creation, or any absolute genesis within. Um, in that tradition, it's a matter of, you know, we've always been. And um, um, another, another uh, area that might be of interest in this would be uh, Sitchin's um, Lost Book of Enki, which is like the Sumerian version of um, a very similar story. Um, so the uh, the logic really is that if the, if the oldest racial bloodline still in existence today is of the ninth generation, then something was obviously happening prior, perhaps something shielded even from fairy sight. And for this. That, that would be something we need to go to the creators, the master scientists, the, the divine engineers, so to speak, that, that are in charge of all that. Um, and some of those aspects uh, we actually find in the Elvish Silva de Tresti, but there's like a human copy that, um, even though I haven't really explored it cover to cover, it's called the Urantia book, which apparently um, deals with some of that. But the, the first generation of Gaz is, like, nameless. Um, we know um, genetically they were produced. It was two people, twins, brought or sent here or brought down that um, to be sure that Middle Earth was inhabitable in its physical form. And their lifespan was purposely short-lived. It reached full maturity with the passing of only 12 solar years. And um, they were of such a nature that they were programmed to innately be aware of this need to live for and with each other. And although the sexual gender is not mentioned, and that's an aspect that is often obscure in matters of elven fairy, um, aliens, or other interdimensional beings, but um, originally they didn't have the ability to reproduce, and this was later given, so there were ex definitely like multiple levels of experimentation going on that we find records of. Um, so lots to, be, lots to be discovered and discerned through, and we will continue with the story.